guys, it's your name Kate, welcome back to my channel. It's just another day in paradise. Now today is especially horrific because not only is it freezing cold, but it's also raining. Oh, listen to it. I am riding BMW's R90 Urban GS. I've had quite a few people write on my videos on the community tab saying take an R90 out Kate so that is exactly what I'm doing today it's my day off I thought I'd have a nice leisurely ride I thought I'd take it over Rivington because I like Rivington I mean not the best conditions but it could always be worse so I've decided to jump on the R90 today because I've had a review in the pipeline for a while so I thought I'd just get it done on my day off. Um, no. Now I absolutely love this bike. It is a BMW, obviously. It's got that lovely 1170cc boxer engine, air-cooled at its heart. It's a really, really bomb-proof engine. There's a lot of die-hard R90 cultists out there. They absolutely love these things. A bit of background about this bike. Now, it's a, a nod to the old R80 GS. I'll whack a picture on the screen now if you're not familiar with the bike. And obviously they do this bike in that lovely colour scheme, the white tank with the popping red seat. Now, as you can quite clearly see, I'm not on that colour scheme bike. I'm actually on the gold and black option 719 uh, paint scheme bike. And with this scheme, it sets you back an extra £420. But it looks absolutely gorgeous. So this bike is quite different to a lot of the BMWs that you usually see me ride. You normally see me on the really modern ones, um, the brand new, you know, fancy TFT dashes with all the electronics, quick shifters, auto blippers, everything like that. Well, this one, this one doesn't even have a fuel gauge, which is really taking it back to basics. If you're one of the people in my comments that are always like, oh no, okay, you know, these bikes are nice, but there's just so much technology on them, there's just so much to go wrong, then this bike, my friend, is perfect for you. The reason why you've got all the bikes now and they've got the multi stage traction controls, they've got their crazy anti wheelie, they've got the dynamic suspension and all that. Not with this. You literally jump on it and you give it a ride. It's a very raw and sort of primitive riding experience. You've got a single little dash which is mainly analog but you've got a little LCD square which tells you some very very basic things. Oh that noise though. So things that it'll tell you, so I'm looking right now we've got clock We've got odometer, we've got trip one, trip two, trip A, we've got engine temp, and we're back to clock. That's literally what you've got. There's no gear indicator, which I do love, I must say. And I am a sucker for a gear indicator. There's no range. So I've been commuting to work on this and the lights come on and I've got up to 15 miles and then I've filled up because it, it starts like a, a separate count to how many miles you've ridden on the fuel light. But because I do commute on it, you kind of get a feel for when you're going to need to fill up. Oh, squirrel. Oh, that noise. Listen to it. Oh. 
Now I'm quite fortunate that this bike has got some nice road tyres on it. Not them stupid knobbly things. to it when you just open it up it sounds like a dirty wet fart and normally that is not good but in this instance for some reason it's kind of captivating not so much when Mike does it on the couch having said that it's kind of got a different feel to it <laughs> oh thump so I'll take you over the, the trusty tops of Rivington Nice blind bend here, absolutely honking. So like I said, I've been commuting to work on this and with these bikes that have got all the gadgets and gizmos, you do feel a little bit spoiled. Like for example, filtering through heavy Manchester traffic. Ah, you feel it in your left hand, pulling that clutch in non-stop. Whereas on like the XR that I've been taking, it's just like auto blip and quick shift, no drama, grid. Ugh. But yeah, I feel like this bike is such a good example that you can have an absolute who and you don't need all those gizmos. Like I said, it doesn't have a quick shift or an auto blipper, but yeah, it's just got so much character. It's like who cares it shakes to the side it's it's wicked so in terms of height the normal sort of r90s r90 pures r90 scrambler the r90s in the range are really good for people that are kind of on the short legged side Whereas this thing is pretty tall, it's got a seat height of 850 mil, which obviously it's doable for me, else I wouldn't be out on it now. God, there's so much like horse shit on these roads. Obviously it's doable, but I am very aware when I have to stop that I'm probably not going to be able to put my feet down and, and the reason for that as well is because the seat is quite flat and wide you can get a lower seat for this because the seat is quite padded and it basically makes it 820 mil which is a bit more doable for people like me but I roll with what I've got and I try not to whinge too much about it <laughs> basic no-nonsense features of this is you can turn the ABS off at a touch of a button which is good if you fancy doing those loose gravelly tracks or a little spot of green lane in oh cow shit oh I'm gonna get wet right as you can tell this isn't my normal sprightly run over this road I'm trying to keep in one piece but that leads me on to the handling of this thing. You know, you get this on dry roads with good tyres. It is a blast to throw around, honestly. Like the weight is so low, being the boxer engine. And then it just really, really enables you to sort of flick it around like no one's business. I can't even explain the exhaust note is gorgeous on this thing power wise I forgot to tell you 109 brake horsepower it's just a right fun bike so it's like this I'm on a hill and 
it's not the comfiest position for me to be in because I, I can only tiptoe on one foot oh another thing it's got heated grips which is absolutely lovely at this moment in time because like I say it's freezing it's got to be about three degrees got to be Oh, I tried to put my visor up then but I just got hit in the face with rain so it's a relatively neutral position um, my feet are quite in the middle of the bike they're not not sporty and back I'm not like hunched over ready to give it big licks at the same time it's just a really comfy position my back's not 100% straight I'm a little bit lent over but I've got short arms so that doesn't help my cause the bars are very wide very flat perfect for the leverage in the bends when you just count the steering and ah oh. levers are adjustable which is a lovely touch particularly for me with stumpy fingers mirrors they just tie in with the whole aesthetic proper old school round things now one of the things that i absolutely adore about the r90s and if i was super rich and could have loads of bikes in and i was going to get a bike that i could really severely customize and make my own and i had bags of dosh just to throw at it it would be an R90 because where I work we see some and they come in and oh my god people do some wacky but awesome things with them and they really sort of spark your creativity as to how you would do yours and if you were to customise an R90 what things would you do in fact what would you do tell me in the comments below if you guys put in the comments below what you would do to an R90, how you would modify it, customise it, um, I'll do the same. I'll have a think and I'll post down exactly what I would do to an R90. You feel at one with everything. It's got this little cowl at the front. Doesn't really do much. I think it's more of a styling exercise than anything. But you know what? I don't care that it doesn't do much because if you're expecting to jump on one of these retro bikes and have full wind protection it's they don't come hand in hand so you're going to be severely disappointed so yeah i think one of the defining features of this bike over like the other r90s is its height really it's so that you can do a bit of off-roading you got that clearance you got that height when you let the revs drop right low and you wind it on oh <laughs> nice let's do it again it's just so punchy it's just so porky let the revs drop right low 25 mile an hour oh that is where you get the sexiest sounds you know can imagine with the full system oh it makes me shudder this is corona era you don't have to go in parking spots Pff, no you just make your own rules up hopefully you guys can see this So it looks gorgeous, it's got the black spoke wheels. I have seen these come into the showroom, gold ones. They look pretty good as well. Personally, I like the black ones. You've got the Brembo uh, calipers on the twin discs at the front. Ample stopping power on these things. You've got the exhaust where the headers usually change color pretty easy. Got LED indicators. Heat grips on this one needs a bloody good clean but that's what happens when I commute on it on the daily it's got a an exhaust that's it's not the twin pipe one or a high-rise one or anything 
the seat is very flat, very comfy though. And the tank in those colours look pretty good. So yeah, basic walk round. I'll fire her up and I'll just show you that box of shake. Hopefully you can see it. The whole thing rocks, it's so rock and roll. Right guys, well I'm going to head that way. I pretty much think that I've said all I need to say on this thing. Cracking little bike. If you guys ever want to take it out, you know that I work selling these things at Williams Motorcycles in Manchester. Of course I'll get you out on a bike if you're looking to test ride one. Yeehaw! So yes, until next time guys. Keep on keeping on!